Hey folks, Jonathan Wilson, Toga Man Guitar Vial Guy. Just um, gonna share with you some of the latest things that we're doing here at Toga Man Guitar Vials, otherwise known as arpeggionis. Anyway, um, this is the latest in the design of uh, our headstocks. And we're going back in honoring Johann Stoffer, the guy who uh, invented the arpeggioni over 200 years ago and was a very an amazing guitar builder who was widely copied through Europe in the early 1800s. And uh, anyway, um, this is uh, basically a pattern uh, that came off one of his 200 year old instruments. There are some subtle differences now. We are actually going over to uh, precision German Wittner tuners and they look like if you can see these, um, they look very much like um, friction pegs, but they are in fact precision tuners. And they look nice and clean, I think, and they, the installation is very nice. But anyway, I want to talk to you about the background of this and um, how we've arrived at the day where I'm going back 200 years. So, Back in uh, the early 2000s, about 2001, 2002, I designed a particular thing, and by golly, this thing just took off. This is the uh, Togaman guitar vial. This is an electric. This particular one's not strung up and functional at the moment, but you can see what I was going for. Um, sort of a three and three, ergonomically similar to a classical guitar. And later on, I started uh, jazzing them up a little bit with, uh, I'm going to grab one from this wall here. Started to go into to more directions like this, where it was kind of a, not a really a snail box, but I'm going to call it a snail box. So we had the three and three tuners. Uh, we wound up eventually going over to the Planet Waves tuners. And that's worked out pretty well for many years and a lot of uh, good music's been made on these things. Um, I'm going to uh, give you a little background on where this pivot's coming from. So anyway, um, every now and then I have to revisit some things and over the years I've had to go from tail to head, head to tail and uh, do some design tweaking. And one thing that's always kind of haunted me has been the peg head or the headstock. And uh, for whatever reason, I kept in that sort of that groove and that rut, mainly because I had to just get instruments out every month and there was no time for like re-engineering a lot of things and going down other rabbit holes. But in more recent times, I'm um, going into some composite builds and I really want to get this to where uh, I'm really very satisfied with it. So. Um, without further ado, hopefully you can see this illustration. On the bottom here is the uh, snail box pattern, which is the three and three. It's like an open plan, and we put those tuners in just like I described. And that's worked out pretty good. Now this red line here, if you can see that, represents the low E string. And it's sort of about the same length as the uh, high E string. Except for the fact that if we go over here on the acoustic models, we can see that I have sort of fan patterned it out so that the uh, lower string is a little longer. But uh, it turns out 200 years ago, Johann Stoffer did something that was radically different, which um, you can see on this particular pattern, the low E goes much farther out. So we get more of what we would consider to be like a harp pattern in terms of where the strings start and stop. That's not to be confused with the bridge and the nut. This is string length going from end to end. And this does have an effect, um, a quite a positive one actually, when we can actually stretch the uh, bass strings out a little further. And we get a little more snap factor, um, and so it does juice it up a bit. So, um, I wanted to give you a little background though, over here, we have what, we, what I'm going to call Leo. Leo is in Leo Fender, who, by the way, uh, was the guy uh, behind the Fender of guitars, of course. And you can see the similarity between that and Johann. Johann is, of course, the Johann Stouffer pattern from uh, Vienna 200 years ago. And 
you can see that the, they both have one thing in common. They have uh, six on a side tuning patterns. Uh, however, um, the similarities end because uh, where the strings wind up. On this one, we had to have the, uh, longer gear shafts that would actually wind up to where the uh, string posts were. And that was kind of a really convoluted sub-assembly that had to go into that. Um, over here, it, it seems Leo probably was like, you know, if we make the base side a, a, a straight line like this, we can put six individual tuners there, problem solved. And now, as far as industrial design goes, that's pretty sound. Um, but on the other hand, that does um, change Johann's deliberate longer lower E string and higher treble string. So we'll say the bass string is longer, the treble string shorter. Now when Jimi Hendrix flipped up, upside down his uh, Stratocaster, wait for it. I had a Strat neck around here somewhere. It went away. But anyway, when he flipped it down, he effectively did this. So it, he stoperized his Stratocaster by going righty-lefty. Anyway, um, so when I really was going back and questioning this, I really wanted to just, not to just upset people who like that sort of semi-symmetrical thing. Um, with all due respect to people who have, you know, some aesthetic considerations, for me, it's better engineering. And by going to this, I think it's pretty cool. We're honoring Johann Stoffer, the guy who invented the arpeggioni, and we're also bringing the superior string layout, which uh, is included in this. And of course, now we've got the uh, German Wittner tuners on here. These are, uh, like I said, they're essentially um, planetary gears. So um, there's no, no screws, no crazy stuff on here. So I think it's a pretty good job. It's pretty clean. And um, and in the uh, the Austrian tradition of uh, many guitars of those days, it's all black. Kind of cool, I think. So we're gonna you know add that to the Toga Man line. So you can expect seeing these going away and seeing these coming in. Now we're sort of in a transition at present. There's some of the um, ones that were in the job queue that we're getting out that are like this. However, we're making it go away. And it's for a very good reason, because I am for whatever is going to serve the instrument in the best possible way. There is more expense that goes into this, but hopefully we can actually slick down our process, which means that if we can get one instrument out every one to two month cycle, hey, we're all winning. So anyway, I just thought I'd bring you up to speed on some of this backstory. Have an exceedingly awesome day, be inspired, and uh, be sure to check out the new uh, stuff on the website at www.guitarviols.com. G-U-I-T-A-R-V-I-O-L-S.com.